You've got to embrace travelling at a fast speed and you've got to embrace the fact that every now and then you're going to come off the road and it's going to be ugly. Always right from a young kid, I love to see the game played freely. I never wanted to be one of those people that just had to hang in in the game and I had to knuckle down and I just couldn't stand that. I had to try and look in the bowler's eyes and sort of see whether he felt like he was under pressure or not. New Zealand finally has someone in the 300 club. And he can now stand tall alongside the game's greats. It wasn't until I almost freed myself up, played more aggressively. A strange way it actually ended up in more consistent results. There's nothing better in cricket than hitting a six, right? To me, that's how I wanted to play the game. It's his last test match. Fastest test hundred now belongs to Brendan McCullum. I did always want to be a cricketer because the old man played 75 first class games for Otago and my brother was a year older and we were always sort of in and around cricket. It was far from affluent, it was, it was quite a sort of blue collar upbringing. From our point of view, we had everything we needed. We had a bat, we had a ball, we had the passion for cricket. It was a great place to be able to develop your passion and, and learn your game. There wasn't too many playstations or, or things like that back then, and it was literally about being out with a bat and a ball or a rugby ball and a soccer ball. Being around and seeing your dad do it and his friends, and you wanted to aspire to be there. New Zealand cricket fraternity is quite small. I heard about this kid from down south, and he just was a step above everyone else. You just looked at him bat, you looked at him wicket keep, and you thought there's an absolute natural talent. Growing up in Dunedin, it's a very, very proud place. Everyone's got their own pride in there, where they come from, but Dunedin especially, it's got a real kind of, let's say hard band kind of attitude. The further south you go, the tougher they get. I think he brought that kind of fight, that kind of never back down attitude to the way that he played. So he was tough from the outset. To be able to play for Otago yourself and with your brother is, is pretty special. We did that for a number of years and both of us were in and out and had different opportunities. And it was something that you'll never forget is being able to represent your, your province, that blue and gold that you bleed. But then there came a time where I had to move away from Otago for a period. I had to find out what else was out there and just broaden my sort of horizons a little bit and understand that if I wanted to be a successful international creator or even a successful person, I had to actually step outside of my comfort zone and, and sort of just take on a little bit more of the world. And so I ended up moving away to Canterbury. I wasn't that far away, but it was a huge step. Brendan McCullum's form at state level earned him a call up to the national side. Confidence build up, it's four runs. In January 2002, he made his international debut in a one day match against Australia at the Sydney Cricket Ground. I should never have been picked, to be honest. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was absolutely shocking. My debut, I was run out as well in front of a big crowd at ECG. I had a taste of what international crew was like, but I also knew that. I didn't just want to play one game or two games or anything like that. I, I wanted it to be my life. 
If his start in one-day international cricket was hardly auspicious, McCullum's debut in test cricket was more promising. He scored an impressive half-century against South Africa in Hamilton in March 2004. He's just sort of scooped the side of it off. Extraordinary start. I'd played a lot of one-day cricket before I played that test match, so I felt a lot more comfortable. I knew all the guys. I understood the dynamic of international cricket. You're still nervous. Uh, there's been a hole carved out of the wicket by Andre now. So you can see there's a brave guy as well. It was obvious to everyone that he could have a long test career. And that's it. 50 to Brendan McCullum. On test debut, magnificent effort. 78 balls only it's taken. Brendan's a very confident young man. And it takes a lot to knock him back a lot. So it was a good start for him, a good positive start. And the other thing is, is to get people off your back. He got everyone excited because of how good a player he was, um, how good a wicket keeper he was. You see players come in who, who look talented, who've got the skills, but he put an effort in everything he did on the cricket field, and I think that really impressed a lot of the senior guys, and therefore the team was rooting for him to do well from day one. He was always a, a wicket keeper, he loved it. He was one of the most gifted wicket keepers I've seen. Some of the catches he took, I don't think many other players could have done that. He used to stand up to fast bowlers that were bowling 130k when he was 18, 19. For a 19-year-old kid to do that, like, is, is pretty impressive. By 2005, three years after his debut, McCullum was a regular for New Zealand in all forms of the game. He would catch the world's attention in a Chapel Hadley trophy match against Australia. McCullum hit 50 from just 25 balls and gave a glimpse of his audacious power hitting. Definite motivation to beat Australia, it's, especially because they're the great Australian team you know, of that era. For Brendan to come in and play with that explosiveness, to play with that fearlessness, that's probably one of those games that, it, that gave him a, a lot of belief that that style of play could work for him. Got into this one. That's his favourite area. Result again for McCullough. I managed to get a couple away and we got a partnership at the end which got us home. To have beaten such strong and great Australian team, to actually have made an impact as well and done something for your own country. Whether it would be he was playing test cricket, one day cricket or 2020, aggression was how he was going to sort of play the game. He has absolutely smashed that straight onto the roof. I remember one game to play for Northern Districts in, against Otago and Hamilton. I think he hit me for four sixes in a row. No one will ever forget the opening game of the IPL in, in Brendan's innings, which probably epitomises 2020 cricket in itself and to a point probably put the IPL on the map. T20 cricket's very much uh, our sort of style. It's energetic, it's enthusiasm, it's, uh, it's aggression. Oh, you're not going to catch that. No one's getting close to that. Huge hit! Might be out of the ground. It's an incredible game. I think it's pushed the envelope of people's skills and, and their minds for all forms of the game. The opportunities that you see in T20 to entertain is, is probably the biggest thing. And I think at the end of the day, that's part and parcel of what you do. It wasn't simply the speed of his scoring that impressed, but the daring innovation he brought to the art of batting. In 2010, in Christchurch against Australia, McCullum became only the second man after Chris Gale to score a 2020 international century. They had fast bowling line up, really quick. They came over to our country. All the talk was about how quick these boys bowl. Dirk Nannis. Ryan Harris. Sean Tate. 
I remember Brendan almost sweep slogging into the crowd. He set a tone for us um, with that fearlessness, with that aggressiveness, and to take on the premier bowls in world cricket and, and play some audacious shots. So I think he scooped Sean Tate back over the keeper's head, little things like that. Set up a great game. The reason that I played those scoop shots, in all honesty, I didn't feel I had the power against his pace to be able to hit him in front of square for four or six. So that was why I did it. And I got one away and I was like, I actually saw that one, so I might try it again. So I got another couple away and then all of a sudden the adrenaline's pumping. It was quite an amazing feeling. It was my home crowd at the time as well and it was pumping, like the crowd was heaving. Despite McCullum's individual exploits, New Zealand's test side was underperforming. By the end of 2012, the Black Caps had managed only one test victory in nine matches. Captain Ross Taylor was dismissed and replaced by Brendan McCullum. It was a hot topic in New Zealand, my God, it was so controversial for, it seemed like a month, there was nothing else that mattered in New Zealand sport. To sack your national captain and be the replacement, I think you're always starting on the back foot. We are on a downward spiral, but we hadn't kind of hit rock bottom, and, and for us to implement change, was to actually go, you know what, we are so bad right at this point in time. Whatever we've been doing before needs to change. A lot of guys would have backed away from that and said, not me, hands up, I just want to play, this is too tough. Uh, but he took it on, he, he rode that storm. It was obviously an incredibly challenging time for, for everyone involved. And then to, I think, to go straight to South Africa and have a tough performance over there, there was obviously a heap of pressure on. struck again. McCullum, the captain for New Zealand, is gone. McCullum's first test match as captain was an embarrassment. The Kiwis were bowled out for just 45 on the first morning in Cape Town. In the air, it's going to be taken. There it is. The Kiwis are gone for just 45 runs. It was a bit of a line in the sand where it was, right, we need to do things differently, basically. And I think from that point on was, was certainly where Brendan changed the whole dynamic of how we wanted to operate. That's where he really showed his, his worth as a leader, to be able to um, keep a group together, to keep a team of players and support staff together through those incredibly difficult times. At the time, you're under immense amount of pressure. And I contemplated walking away from the game when I was only 30 years of age. I was captain of New Zealand at the time, so <laughs> everything that I dreamed of wanting to achieve. Then I decided, why well, I'm going to play, and if I'm going to play, then I'm going to play for the same reasons and the same values and with the same freedom when I first started playing the game. He modelled aside the way he would want the game played, and if they played that way, they would have some great success. They would have losses, but they'd have more success than failure but they'd have a hell of a lot of fun playing. One of Brendan's strengths is man management. We had a group of guys and nutted out a, a brand of cricket and a style of cricket that, that suited the guys in the changing room. Oh. Yeah! Brendan made massive changes within this side. The culture developed so much under his leadership. We had actually been on a path for a little while post South Africa where we had started to play the cricket we wanted to be known for. We hadn't got the results, but we'd started to trend in the right direction. Lovely shot. Beautiful piece of timing straight down the ground. It was desperate to actually take the team to the next stage by getting some success against India, who were number one team in the world at the time. We played brilliantly in the first game in Auckland. Here he comes. How well is he headed? He has hit that. For Brendan McCallum, and what an innings, another captain's innings. So we turn up to Wellington, we're like, Jesus, what an opportunity to beat the number one team in the world. What a line in the sand that would be for us as a team. Needing just a draw in the second test to clinch the series win against India, New Zealand trailed by nearly 250 runs after the first innings. At 52 for three in their second innings, the Black Caps needed something special from their captain if they were to avoid defeat. We are under the pump in the second innings and I scratch him way around and I don't know how it happened or why it happened, but for some reason it did. Wow. He's brought up a test match under Brendan McCullum. What a way to go to it. I got a lot of luck early in my innings. I got dropped a couple of times. It's an incredible shot from McCullum. And it goes.
goes all the way for six. Double century, Brendan McCullum, New Zealand captain. What a player he has become. This has been an amazing innings. We literally just took it ball by ball, over by over, hour by hour, session by session. Down the wicket, down the ground, and six up onto the bank, and a big one to boot. I said to the boys, tea time, I was shot. And 12th man came running out, and he's like, just get through the stumps. We now turn on the TV, and Martin Crowe is on the TV talking about the significance of what it would mean for New Zealand to get 300. I was on 280 or something like that. And I was like, oh, now I'm nervous. <laughs> Monday morning, which is traditionally when people go back to work and the test match crowds are, are dwindling. Uh, the place was chocker and there was blokes in suits. Blokes who knew that they were only going to be there for half an hour, just but they wanted to be there and say I was there when it happened. I don't think I've seen the country sort of so galvanised around a cricket game. I remember people sitting their whole day up to, to watch Brendan to see if he could get the, the final few runs. Jimmy Neesham, who I was batting with at the time, he was playing his first ever test match. He turns around and says, I can't believe we'll have all come here to watch me bat today. <laughs> and then we went out there and I was sort of, I was quite nervous and then I got a little bit of luck again. I nicked one that bounced short of MS Stoney. I was kind of like, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. When he hit that shot behind point to, to bring up the 300, I had a tear in my eye talking about it. But look at the people, look at the joy. It's not even lunchtime. The joy around New Zealand. The way that people went on about that innings, um, talk about that day, I think it's one of the, the special memories in, in New Zealand cricket's history. Well played, Brendan McCullum. You are a real champion. When you do something like that in New Zealand, it also wakes the world up. And the world wanted to see Brendan McCullum every day from that point onwards. His country's first player to make a triple test century. McCullum's incredible form continued. Against Sri Lanka, he scored 195 off just 134 balls, becoming the first Kiwi to 1,000 test runs in a calendar year. It was about playing for the team, and he went out, whacked it everywhere. That was an unbelievable knock, big boundaries, and he just, yeah, special to watch. That year, he scored over a 1,000 test runs, I think. It's a heck of a year. Not emulated by too many players, particularly New Zealand players, in the history of the game. And to score that really did convince everybody, including Brendan, that he was truly world class. The 2015 Cricket World Cup would give Brendan McCullum a major stage to showcase his talent. Held in Australia and at home in New Zealand, the Kiwis believed they could win the tournament for the very first time. All of our plans came together so that when we arrived at the World Cup, we could identify a couple of things. One, we're going to need some luck. Two, we're playing in our own country. If we start the tournament well, then there's going to be a groundswell of public goodwill, confidence and support. I think if we look back, that World Cup was phenomenal. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, that's a free hit almost. Cannonball loose deliveries to this man. Brendan went out and targeted every frontline bowl on every side. He took Malinga down, I think, in that first game. Oh, he's gone straight back over his head. What a blow this is. The style of cricket we played. Everyone sees the four slips in a gully against England. No one knows the preparation that went on today. He had a huge influence on, uh, on a number of those games that, that we played. He was very forward thinking uh, in the way he kept them. He destroyed all the England bowlers. It's a remarkable shot in and just clumped down the ground by McCullough. 
fast forward to the Aussie game and he, and he took down Mitch Johnson. And then Dale Steyn in the, in the semi-final. It is his way of, of leading from the front and going out and doing what, what he does best. And 50 for Brendan McCullum in 22 deliveries. In Auckland, New Zealand won an epic semi-final against South Africa with just one ball to spare. Inspired by their captain, the Black Caps were in their first ever World Cup final. But their run of eight successive tournament wins would come to an end in Melbourne. McCullum was out for a duck as the Aussies were crowned world champions for the fifth time. What happened in the finals, we got beaten by a team who was better than, than us on the day. Soviet, I live with that. So it would have been nice to have won the World Cup. It didn't matter in the end, like what we did is we, we won the world over in terms of support for our team. And 2015 would be another record-breaking year for McCullum. Against Sri Lanka in Christchurch, he hit his 100th test match six. That's 100. 106 in test cricket. Then he surpassed Adam Gilchrist's record for the most test match sixes ever hit by a single player. Records and things, I don't care anything about them, except the 100 sixes. Because <laughs> it's like, well, I know I'm an out-and-out -out slogger who's just happened to fashion a sort of career, um, but to have look, sixes, there's nothing better in cricket than hitting a six, right? He loved hitting the ball hard, loved hitting the ball a long way, uh, and he liked to get maximum value for what he did. I think hitting the, that six was a very sweet moment. In fact, I think I can recall his celebration there. There was quite a big smile on his face that wasn't there for all sixes. To have gone past Gilly as well, who you know, he's one of my idols, to have gone past him was, yeah, it was amazing. In February 2016, age 34, Brendan McCullum called time on his New Zealand career. He'd featured in more than 100 consecutive tests for the Black Caps. Fittingly, in his final match against Australia, Brendan McCullum went out in style. I wouldn't say I'm an overly emotional person, but it's, it meant a lot. I couldn't live with myself I'd, in my final test innings against Australia at home, playing the best form of the game, which I've loved my entire career. If I died in the hole, so to speak, and sort of went down without firing a shot. So I said, I'm going to try and play like this. I said, that's the only way I think I can make an impact on this game for us. That's the first one for Brandon McCullum. No mucking around. I guess had the, can I say, balls to, to go out and, um, and play that way in a test match, his last test match, to have the freedom and, and back himself to go out and play that way. It was, it was something special to, to sit back and watch. I got a couple away and it was just like, I, was, I wasn't going to stop. I was just going to keep going and going and going. Oh, yes. Six more. Like he signed off in the best possible fashion. Some things are just sort of written in the stars. You knew he wasn't going to go quietly. He goes over the top. Could it be it? It is. It's a record for Brandon McCullum. What a magnificent hundred here in Christchurch. Fastest test hundred now belongs to Brendan McCullum. The greatest, fastest hundred in the history of the game. They go past the great Vivian Richards, one of the most posing batsmen in the history of all time. It just wells me that that kind of thing could happen. But then I look at who it happened to, and I think. What else, really? Grew up loving the Frenchers. I got a voicemail from the Frenchers saying, if I ever wanted anyone to be the record of zero, it was pretty amazing. Pretty fitting the way that he, he performed in that, in that final test match. And it was like, I've done this for all my career, I'm not about to change. I remember the feeling of walking off and I remember the feeling as well sitting in the change room afterwards. It was nice to share the dressing room with my mates for the final time as well. And go out as well on your own terms. To go out playing well at home and captaining your country.
Brendan McCullum throughout the later years of his life was a true entertainer. He was a lead from the front. What he did for New Zealand cricket was, was pretty phenomenal. Everyone could see he was the complete package as a captain. The captain is an extension of the team. I'm incredibly proud to be able to walk away going, you know what, we played the game in the right spirit. But I felt at the end of it we had developed our soul again and to look back on that and say that you were a part of it, to give guys that freedom to, to discover that, uh, that's pretty cool.